how to prepare your house for sale and to sell specifically home staging tips so i just want to warn you some of the information i'm going to tell you may be offensive or insulting but that's really not my intention so let's agree not to do that okay my goal is to help you understand the process so this way you can generate the highest possible price you're going to get the most excited most ready buyers to come and see your home and make some offers on your property and that's what you want so let's get going number one is furniture you want to take a look around and see do you really have a lot of furniture the big thing about furniture is the most obvious is that they make the room look much smaller than it is especially if you are putting furniture that are cutting angles and way too many furniture you just want to make it simple you want to have the room look bigger spacious air flowing so that will allow buyers to come in and envision and see the space and fall in love with your house so if you do have furniture that you still want to keep that's fine but put them away in storage and keep them there until you're moving and take them with you now here's one that is embarrassing to talk about and that's household smells right when we live in our own home we are immune to the smell that exists in the house and it doesn't necessarily mean that the smell is bad it just means that it has smell specifically if you have rugs or carpets upholstered furniture they tend to absorb all the smell just from cooking so what i usually do is as a realtor when i come in i ask permission from my client when i'm talking to them i say would you want me to give you my experience with what i've experienced walking in the door because somebody a stranger or somebody who doesn't visit your house very often they will have a whiff of what the house smells like usually doing some stuff like opening a lot of windows doors if necessary and then getting a somebody professional to actually clean the carpets the upholstered furniture that will help but this is something very sensitive because if a buyer walks in even if your house is beautiful and then some a smell hits them in the nose i don't know that might be a huge turn off okay number three keeping knickknacks on display although having some knickknacks on display may actually be a good thing and buyers can visualize visual themselves that they walked into a homey home but be careful and keep that to the minimum don't make it too specific maybe like a knickknacks that are more like a decoration would work well because in the end of the day you really want to allow the buyer to focus on the space that the house has to offer and envision themselves putting their own personal items into your home so try to keep that to the minimum i always recommend just get them off and keep everything neat and clean number four excessive dark paint that's a big no-no so dark paint no matter how much light you have in your home is going to make the house look very dark and unappealing so you don't want to just rely on sunlight and the lighting that you have inside the home buyers will be thinking like oh i have to use electricity all the time daytime morning people always think about cha -ching, cha -ching, spending money and plus it doesn't look good dark colors also contribute to shrinking the space ladies how we want to wear black because we feel that it slims us down the same goes for paint so keep that in mind okay number five in relation to paint different colors of paint in different rooms especially when they're different palettes and really bright so it's okay to have different shades of colors as long as you make them all within the same palette 
then that's going to, to work well. But anything that's really flashy and tacky, plus colors like that always show every imperfection on the walls. Stay away from that. A good paint job will do the job. So if you can't decide how to maneuver different shades of a palette, just choose one neutral light color that matches with the scheme of the house and get a great paint job and call it a day. Don't make it complicated. That's not what it's about. Number six, lack of light. We just spoke about lack of light. So what are we going to do? Are we going to now start hiring electricians and adding lighting? Maybe, but if you really go into like high heads and all that stuff, then that's now going to cause to now repair the ceilings and all that. So try to always brighten up the room with other options, but make lighting a priority. If you don't have any lights in the ceilings or they're very dark, so a dark light on the ceiling could be easily fixed if we change light bulbs to really white light bulbs, if we are also changing to a high bulb of light bulbs to create a lot more light. I've noticed that some light bulbs are yellow and the yellow light bulbs make the room look dark. So switch those around. But if you have no lights on the ceiling at all, I recommend don't go all the way and digging holes there. Just do track lighting, even though it's not the latest style. But if your choice is no lighting on the ceiling versus track light, go with the track lights. I would, okay? Number seven, hanging artwork. Artwork could be really lovely, could be pretty. Don't put too much of it. But the key factor is don't hang it too high especially if you're a tall person and you're gonna hang it to your eye level it may look very odd and weird to a buyer that's coming in and they're going to feel out of place so either take it down or rehang it to where it's average size person can fit into the eye level number eight multiple focal points in the house or in the room usually a focal point would be in the living room or a family room or both but pick one if you have a fireplace then the fireplace is good to have a focal point if you don't have a fireplace then make the tv the focal point and if you don't have tv or fireplace then choose a window and make a window the focal point of the room just pick one don't do multiples number nine don't forget to take care of the storage areas we forget a lot of times that buyers will come in and open the kitchen cabinets open the closets open every door that you have in the house so one you don't want a buyer to open a door and get something falling on them because it's all cluttered but also you want to keep it a little bit neater arrange it organize it. make sure you remember that okay number 10 let's talk a little bit about the exterior don't forget that the first thing that the buyer sees when they approach to your house is the exterior and the curb appeal. I'm not asking you to start spending money and making a whole big project, but at least keep it clean, keep it, if you have any weeds growing in the pavers and stuff, get somebody to clean it out, spray it out so the weeds don't grow so quickly. If you have some shrubs here and there, get them trimmed. If you have uh, those round, maybe power wash the house if it's dirty. If your house is stucco, a lot of times from the winter, from the rain, from mowing the grass and things like that, you have like green stuff going look like algae and things like that. So try to 
correct that before you put the house on the market. Just keep in mind, organize the, the trash cans. Don't let things look like they're unattended. Pick up the garbage, things like that. Number 11, if we're selling during the holidays, decorations are lovely. They make the home look pretty, but keep in mind that way too many is going to be like the Christmas tree who has all different kinds of de decorations. So you want to tastefully do it, keep it to the minimal, maybe combine two or three colors at most and leave it at that. And last but not least, keeping your kids cluttered as organized as possible. I know this is a tough one, but unfortunately something that needs to do and if you do everything right and you prepare all that then what is going to happen is you're going to keep showing number of days to the minimum you'll get a lot of traffic you'll get your offers you will negotiate you'll pick up a buyer and from that point on you get into contract and then you can relax and if you want to keep your house a mess that's fine too okay i hope this video was helpful i have a lot of great information useful information i'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video make sure to subscribe to the channel make sure to click on the notification bell and i will see you next time thank you for watching